Hello, welcome to the Painting with Commentary for the Paint to Life episode 42, Nebulous the Amethyst Dragon. This is the Reaper Bones Kickstarter 4 dragon named Gauth, or Goth. Uh, it came with Reaper Bones Kickstarter 4, of course. Uh, here's the model unpainted, and this model presented a lot of challenges for me. I painted this for Patchwork M as part of our thing, uh, Secret Santa. Now, you can see him in the background there. The problem with this model I found was he really leans forward quite a lot. So I knew right off the bat that, and, oh, and it's also extremely large. I mean, it's got a wingspan of over 12 inches. So right away I knew I was going to need to make a base for this to support it. So I went with this uh, round, oh sorry, this oval, and I used some XPS foam right out the gate to make a platform for this dragon to stand on. So I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue. You can use white glue to glue these things to these plastic bases, but it takes forever to dry and then it doesn't give you a song. A little bit of a, a strong of a, whatever I'm trying to say. The Gorilla Glue, a bunch of dabs like this, yes, it kind of eats away at the XPS foam, but if you press down firmly and securely, after 15 seconds, it's on, rock solid. And that's what we're kind of aiming for. I'm going to build this base up because I need to make some kind of ravine. I need to somehow have Gauth uh, stand and look down at its target. So we use our hot wire cutter. That little uh, line there just kind of snips this away. I'm gonna trim this out to be the size of the oval. This is the first part of our base. One part is not gonna be big enough. I realized that because he's so droopy and he leans forward so much, I wanted to make this a two-tiered base so that the dragon would be on the second tier. So here he is, and I'm like, okay, well that's no good because he's still too close to the ground, even if I kind of create a valley. And in order for there to be more room, as you can see with this piece, I'm going to glue this on top of that lower part. And in doing so, once I secure it, now Gauth or Nebulous eventually will be able to stand back, arc forward, look down at its target in this little valley that I'll create and we'll get a good um, effect. So that was the idea here. So wipe off the excess, see that's where I'll put him so he's balanced, she's balanced, and down there in that valley I'll put the miniature. Now also because I didn't know what the finished image was going to look like or the finished miniature was going to look like, um, I kind of thought that you could put any mini there. We'll put him imposingly looking down upon an area and you could put any miniature you want there and that's the plan. So I cut off the excess XPS foam just to make kind of a... Um, a rounded backside and we'll continue on now I filmed this in real time I wanted to show just how much I did but obviously there was 20 minutes of real time so I had to speed it up for this and maybe I didn't even speed it up enough but you know in my paint to life videos I don't always go over these carvings they go very fast so you'll see lots of it here so the first thing to do is eliminate all the hard edges using the wire cutter. Um, I'm not worried so much about that flat surface just yet. I'm just going to continue to bite off these little flecks to make um, like a limestone looking kind of shale. And that's what I'm kind of going for here. If you don't have a hot wire cutter, it was one of the best things that I purchased when I started miniature painting, especially when I got into basing more. It just, it, it, you can see here, like look at, see how I'm able to use that wire to kind of shave as thin or as deep as I'd like and, and shape it as well. There are other tools, but I like the wire cutter the best. I find that the other tools, tools are too intense. I'm going to use one later in the video and you'll see. But just by shaving this, and uh, you can use a knife to do this too, but if you have a hot wire cutter, it's just so much easier. You can control it a lot better, and you can get these cool shapes out of it that you can't get with a knife. A knife is going to give you straight, flat, sharp cuts. Depending on how you drive this, if you will, you can take all kinds of layers off. If you've seen some of my other videos on Paint to Life, I've um, thinned this out, like my Umber Hulk video. I uh, used it to shave the foam, and see that's only half inch foam, but I used it to, maybe it's full inch, I'm not sure, 
the diameter of what that foam is is what it is but if you want thinner you have to basically trim it with the hot wire cutter and you can do that so I'm just collecting all those little pieces there you know yes the wire is very hot if you touch it so don't do that but see I'm getting a little bit uh, gregarious in my chopping one thing also, I, I did cut a little too much off than I would have liked. I do remember by the time we get there, the dragon needed a place to stand and I got a little bit in her grill, but it was salvageable. So that's good because you don't want to put all this time and effort into something that you just have to throw away and start all over. But now the more you do this, you see the rounded edges is, is looking pretty smooth. And if you've seen my other videos before, you know I have a trick for dealing with those flat surfaces to make them not look so factory smooth, which I'm going to do in this video as well. So Patchwork M, I didn't know her very well, but uh, she was my partner for this. Uh, she was my destined gift to, to recipient. And uh, I did want to spend a lot of time working on this with her or for her. I didn't just want to do a tiny mini, I want to do something epic. To give you an idea of context, you know, it was for Christmas and I think I started working on this before Halloween. This video right here is me working on this mid-October because I knew I was going to need the time to do it right. So here I am putting the dragon on there and realizing, geez, I almost took too much off. But you can see this is the area I'm going to chop down to nothing, to the base, because that's where the mini's gonna stand. So the dragon can be standing over top of it, imposing with its wings wide open. So yeah, um, putting out a Paint to Life episode every Saturday means there's no time to do big projects, especially on the side projects where you, um, hmm, I guess it's not quite Halloween. This is kind of moot, but I see Gavin Knight back there and I did him early November. So he's finished in this picture, in this video. So clearly it must have been early November. Still, it's obvious that I started earlier than <laughs> before Christmas to do this mini, just for the sheer fact of how much work there would be to do. But as I was saying, um, I, geez, I don't remember what I was saying now. It's getting late and the holidays are over and there's a lot going on, but. All right, patchwork game. So I wanted to do something a little bit epic. I wanted to do something a little bit bigger than normal. So, uh, you know, that stuff gets stringy when it melts if you're not careful. Uh, so I'm trying to carve out as much as I can with my, with my cutter. Also, if you're gonna get a hot wire cutter, I would suggest not buying a battery powered one. Get one that plugs in. It just, it gets hot so fast and, and gives you what you need as quickly as you need it. The batteries, you know, even though they take big D cells, are not worth waiting for. They just don't have the consistent amount of power to be able to get it as hot as it needs to be to cut through this stuff like butter. Trust me, I've used both. And after having the battery, op the battery operated one, I clearly knew the potential for such a uh, tool. Oh look, see this is one of the other attachments. See this, when I touch it, it literally just disappears. Look, it's like a, a slicer, but the problem I find with it is it does gunk up. Like the, the melted XPS foam stays like a residue on the tool. So it's nice in that like a, a sharp knife you can, um, you know, flatten out these areas. And of course, this is an all-in-one tool. It has the wire, it has these things. See how it kind of just, but I just, I don't like the melted residue it leaves behind. See how sticky and gummy it looks? So I'm constantly wiping it off of the blade. And you can see it's left behind on the rock face too. See, it's all hardened now and it looks like snot or whatever. Now I'll have to touch up, the, I'll have to deal with that. It just doesn't look as stony as the wire cutter does but sometimes as in this i can't get the wire in there because the base is just too big so i'm gonna have to use this actually i believe i'm gonna bring out the knife soon too because it was a all hands on deck to try and gouge this out to look like a valley um while we're talking about this see there's another tool i've just put in it's the stout blade it's not as long as the other one it's it burns a lot more hot but yeah um before i forget here comes the toothbrush. Yeah, it's your wife's toothbrush is what I put as a funny joke because you know you want to use an old scrummy toothbrush. Um, so they sell XPS foam that's thicker than half inch. You can buy it. It's like two inches thick. It's, there's your wife's toothbrush. 
The problem with the thick stuff is if you want thin pieces, which for miniatures I kind of do, I mean if I was a train guy always doing set pieces and train pieces, I'd probably want the thicker stuff, but for me, I like the smaller stuff to go with the 28 mil bases, so that's why I'm happy with what I have. And if I want a thicker piece, I glue them together like I did here. But just a fun fact, if I wanted to make this a lot easier on myself, I might have just got a big piece and then molded it out. So as you can see, at this point, I'm just going to carve right down to the circle at the bottom, shred that off, pop it off, and then we're going to have exposed plastic base with the XPS foam around it. And be careful when using your knife. Don't shred your fingers. Use gloves if you must. So I'm pulling it off and there we go. It's so getting a little out of focus. So now I have what I've kind of deemed to be a valley looking down. So the other thing I didn't show on camera, but use acetone in a spray bottle. Spray this whole thing when it's done and it'll look like this. There you go. I'm about to prime it now. See how it looks pitted I've sprayed it with the acetone and I'm putting on this craft gray, craft gray paint as a base, okay? Now, I don't always use craft paints, but I do use them for big set pieces like this because you just, you know, you can't go wrong $4 for like a big pot of it and it never go, you never lose, never run out. Um, but I will say do not spray paint it. The XPS foam will melt due to the accelerant in the spray paint. So just throw it on there and you might need a couple coats. Don't put it on too thick. You don't want to lose any of those cool lines that you've got and textures you got. So see, it looks pretty stony when everything's said and done. And if you do enough blending with the cutters, you won't see the seam where the two pieces are glued together and it just looks like it came from a bigger piece from the front anyways. All right. So now next thing, Agrax Earthshade and a lot. Again, I know people make their own shades and I would, be all for that I just don't know a recipe nor have time so it's a lot of earth shade but you know what that's all right put it on there uh, the reason I went for this is even though one might think oh what about null oil because it's black and it's gray and it's rock well you know in nature even though rocks are gray they're also somewhat brown so I like agrax earth shade in this case to highlight those dark areas and keep an earthy stone look to this now this is a quick little excerpt. I asked Patchwork M what her favorite colors were and she said purple and metallic, but she also likes green. So I knew I was gonna be doing a purple dragon. I know purple and green go very well together. So I started by, I wanted to make some green crystals coming out of this ground, like magical crystals. So I use these little glue sticks and started to try and shape them to look like crystals. I've seen other YouTubers do this before. You can melt them to fix any problems. You can, you know, shave them. And I'm gonna put some pictures in coming up, but maybe I just didn't have big enough glue sticks because mine are, are tiny, therefore they did not look <laughs> very crystalline. They looked pretty terrible. So what I ended up having was these slices of, you know, hard lines and here's what we did basically i put them in a soup of tesseract glow or the new technical citadel paint i thought that that would stain them to be this kind of cool neon green with a bit of yellow so i sank them in the soup and then i put them out onto this you know baking paper to dry and you know none of those look like crystals they look terrible and ultimately i scrapped the whole thing so just FYI, just because you think something will look cool, if you're not feeling it as you're proceeding, just drop it, which is what I did. So back to a natural cliff face with that Agrax Earth Shades using some Dawnstone now to dry brush on there. See how that rock has a kind of brown look to it with the Earth Shade as opposed to a black look from um, a Null Oil? And using the Dawnstone uh, just to highlight some of these edges and those pits from the spray comes out nicely. Um, I'm watching here to see, I feel like I use more colors than I identify in the video. Part of the problem with doing a video over um, two months was that when it came time to edit this, I was like, oh my God, what did I use again? Definitely Dawnstone was one and Praxetti White was another. I think this might be a light, so I think I switched colors here. I think this is like the, the long beard gray. So start with the dark Dawnstone, then I switched to this light gray which is long beard gray to make two 
different brightnesses. And I think I'm switching again here because I've, yeah, this is the white, Prexetti white. So the three different colors to, to apply, and I'm noticing I'm applying less each time uh, in different areas, like the white I'm staying on the top versus the long beard and the, the Dawn. Dawnstone I did everywhere, long beard I only did somewhere. It looks like here's another color. I think this is the flesh, Elder uh, flesh. I'm sorry, I don't have the color, but it looks kind of beigey. I think I was just trying to bring out a little more color, and I'm pretty sure I might even hit it with a slight brown here too. There's the brown, yeah. Just again, I know it's gonna be earthy down there, so let's just put some brown on the stone. So yeah, there you go, four different colors in dry brushing. Now, a little watered down white glue mixture. Put it all over the stones in the uh, on the plastic, all up on there, looks nice. Cause I'm gonna do some black battleground. So yeah, just to let it get us like a kind of a hard stony undergrowth look to the grass driveway rocks i think i did this in the wrong order i put these rocks down and i think ultimately some of them come off later i don't want this to be stony i want it to be grassy so i'm gonna put some shrubs in there and some flock in there i should have put these stones on last the finished product and the finished base i was happy with ultimately but i definitely know um Oh yeah, so it was at this point in the process that I decided I was gonna make an amethyst. So I took a piece of quartz stone that I had, which is, you know, common, and I used the Citadel Drucci Violet to stain it to look purple like an amethyst. That's when I had the idea, oh, what if there's this cool exposed amethyst? And of course, now see, I even missed the flocking. I didn't film myself flocking this, the two different colors of grass. And now I put the flock on, there. I put the amethyst on there. Some tall, tall shrubbery. But that's what I'm talking about. That idea, this is the whole concept of Paint to Life. I put this amethyst on there because I thought it would be cool and it matches the dragon. It's an amethyst dragon and all that stuff. The next thing you know, the entire story of Lolly and the amethyst all comes together. By putting that on the set piece, now I know that I can use that in the story. And if you watched episode 42 of Paint to Life, you'll see that. That this dragon nebulous kind of comes from that stone. So these are just basing things. Those shrubs come from Green Stuff World. They're good, they look like they have little flowers on them. And then these little tufts from Army Painter. Um, I have lots of tufts. I don't even know what they all are. It looks like there's, that's woodland, those deep green ones. You can see I've used the two different colors of grass to uh, identify. Now I'm using hot glue also because when you're using real rocks, they don't glue with, um, with glue. COVID free sticks, nice. So again, get some outside wood to make it look like woodland. As I was saying, they don't glue with some, um, like Gorilla Glue. You can't glue rocks with Gorilla Glue. A little bit more Druchy Violet on the amethyst to make it pop a little more. So use hot glue if you need to, mix it all up. And that is the base. So now we're on to this bad boy himself with a little Phoenician purple. Emily likes purple. So she's going to get a purple dragon. I chose my colors. I watered them down. Really, I used, um, not water. I used the uh, Lamy and medium to thin the paint. So it would go, this dragon is full of tiny little scales. And I've seen some really good jobs of this dragon online. And I think every single one of them was airbrushed. Um, because... The, amend, the details that can come out on the scales are pretty spectacular. You don't want to load up your brush with too much paint. It will totally show. Every single one of those scales is there. It's not just a, a pattern. And each scale will get clogged with paint and it'll look like a big purple mess. So I used a, thinning, a thin purple just so that it all stands out. And... Yeah, this is basically going on the whole dragon. And let's just comment on the model itself. I primed him with uh, the Citadel Corvax white. And see that pose, man? Man, I don't know what the guys at Reaper were thinking. His feet are on those two little stone bases, which of course will work once I put them on my base. But I mean, if you didn't put him on an elevated base, what did you expect? It looks like he's snorting cocaine off the ground. Like really? His chin is like resting at the same level of his feet. 
Even if he was trying to like bite at something, he should be about an inch higher still. You couldn't put anything underneath him to be biting at. He's literally three points of contact, left foot, right foot, chin. And now maybe it's not their fault. Maybe this is droop. I don't think this is their bones black material. I think this is an original PVC plastic, which does have a sag factor. Hell, even when I finished this model and put it all together, I noticed it sagged a bit. Okay. From what Emily got, I tried to pin it. I did pin it to make it as, um, so it would hold out as much as possible and she still sagged. So, I mean, you can only do so much. I think I would have needed to pin her tail to the ground as well. Look at the, look at the wing moving. Look at that. I set it down from holding it. It's just moving on its own back into place. That's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, I think I would have needed to pin her tail to the ground to help offset the forward droop, which is pretty sad. Holy crap, someone's stomping around upstairs. Sorry about that, everybody. So with this first color purple, going into all of the uh, necessary dragony bits, you know, I was gonna get an effect somehow out of this dragon. I'm using base paints now and I'm gonna layer it up or I'm gonna use contrast on top. I did a couple tests with um, a voluptuous pink contrast. I use the reds on the purple, the pink on the purple. It just makes it like look dark red. Um, so at this point, I'm still painting it. No, I'm gonna do something, but I'm not sure what. And then the answer will come to me later from a craft store. But for now, I guess I'm watching TV here. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Oh, I'm painting off screen. Great. Um, another point, if you're painting big models like this, get a big brush. This Citadel base brush that I'm using, it's got a chiseled end, but man, you need it. You need to be able to apply paint fast. And I'm being sloppy on, you know, knowing that I'm going to come at that webbing afterwards. So it's okay if I get it off. It's, I'd rather hit both sides of those spines and then and touch it up later with the webbing and not, and not worry about it right now, which is what I'm doing and webbing's next. Yeah, I mean, I've mentioned this before too, but big mistake newbies make is to, you know, it's mini painting, right? So get the smallest brush you can and paint. Well, that's not so efficient when you're trying to paint something big like this. You need a lot of paint, a lot of coverage. And I think I did two coats of this purple twice. And this is time lapsed. And I've been painting this for about six minutes. So can you imagine? It's a lot of real estate to cover and uh, it's pretty boring. And, you know, you just have to trust that you're going to come at it again and i had an idea for her spines too on the back that's why i'm not I've left them white okay time to do this and i think it's a daemonetta hide yes daemonet hide it's an off purple or a lighter purple like a, a lilac and uh what can i say these are these lines i was saying you know you can if you've done the spines you can now use the chisel brush to make nice straight lines alongside it and not worry about the fact you made mistakes earlier. You can tidy them up now with a nice straight brush work. You know, exhale first before you paint it so your breathing doesn't cause your hand to pulse. And this was the beginning of the purples. Um, the dragon itself was pretty basic. There were no tricky spots. Sometimes there are these questionable parts. Is this part of the webbing or is this part of the spine or is this part of the arm? And I found this one was very straightforward. Again, thin paint though. Apply it thin because you're gonna, you know, you're gonna do multiple coats. And uh, the overhead light kind of gives it that white glisten, but that's just the lighting. Hit the backside, rinse, repeat. And, uh, Again, wasn't sure if the back side of the wings was going to stay the same color or if it was going to get changed. I think we'll find out later. Sometimes when you're painting, you have an idea and sometimes, well, you should always have an inspiration true, but sometimes you just go with it and you, you take what comes to you as you're painting. And that was what I did here. The front and back of this webbing is the same color but not for long. All right, now for his underbelly, we're gonna use the Zurich's, Zurich's purple. 
Um, again, a lot of these purples dry very similarly. He also has cool scale lines. They're very defined. Um, so we're going to hit those with another colors next. Um, so now I'm going to paint over them and I'll come back at them later. But just to give that underbelly a different shade than the rest of his body. Her body. It's nebulous. It's a she. And while I paint this, I'll also mention because M is um, a very like I, I've watched some of her videos. I get the sense of from her. She's a very peace and love kind of girl. Live and let live. Very druidic. You know, this was never going to be a dragon that's tearing people's faces off. We're switching to some Jean Steeler purple now for these lines. You know, this dragon was never, I knew the episode, it wasn't going to be bathing the blood of its enemies. It wasn't going to be beheading horses and it was going to be something special. With that in mind, what does that do for this? Well, you know, it's got horns and wing horns and claws and I'm going to paint those wraith bone, which is going to come up later, but I don't put or like I don't put a shade on them and I don't darken them to look dirty. I mean, I keep the horns white. I keep the shade true to the purple and the pink here for this underneath this gene stealer. Because again, it's not about making this dragon look like it's been through a war where it's been like bathing in blood. It's not that kind of dragon. It's um, in our story, we find out it's an, kind of an extraterrestrial. It's come down alongside that amethyst from outer space and therefore it's just kind of observe and report kind of dragon and when you know that as you're painting it it's coming to you you're painting it to life that will impact the decisions you make i know a lot of people especially when they're starting out love you know oh blood for the blood god it's the coolest paint it looks like blood pour it on a table it looks like spilt blood and you know the first thing you want to do is take your polar bear and splatter this blood for the blood god all over its mouth all over its fur looks like it just jumped out of someone's chest right except now you permanently got this mini looking like it just tear, tore someone apart and what happens if you just want a polar bear for a polar bear's sake i mean you can't undo the gore sometimes there are times when monsters haven't done anything yet and they're just in their natural state and if you gore something up too badly you're stuck with it looking like that forever so this is what I decided to do for the back of the wing. This is the Druchetti Violet that I used for the Amethyst. I'm applying it on the wing as thin as I can. I'm doing it thin because I really don't want it to do, I don't want it to pool super purpley. See those pools? I want some of them, which are settling in those crevices, but I don't want a big glob of it. And I don't want it to turn up later that, oops. Mm. I don't want it to turn up later like, oh, I missed this big, you know, inch long, shadowy, dark patch here. So I filmed the next part of this video, which is coming up in about 30 seconds here in real time. So you can see how I kind of do this, because if you're watching and you don't really know how to do this, well, neither do I. But let's not know together, shall we? Basically, what you just saw there is going to be done in real time here. So with that shade brush when there's nothing in the brush and you touch it to those little pools it absorbs them like a sponge see how see there's some pooling down there by the wing and see when i touch it with my brush it just kind of goes just kind of spin the brush then dry it off on a paper towel get rid of the excess and then go back to the shade and anywhere you see see there's a lot too much there just put the brush there oop Nom, 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 nom. It's all gone. It sucks it up and prevents that crevice from looking like a giant dark black pool. I really just wanted the shade to sit in the certain areas and not again right there. Um, that's kind of why I filmed that that way so you could see how you use the brush to absorb the excess. So now that it's dried and I didn't put too much on it just looks like a different color purple than the beneath. Now this is a metallic blue. I thought this was going to work differently. I thought that using shades, I was going to get that to look so it's blue metallic already from Timia. I used this on Bahamut, the um, god of the dragons, and it worked really well with the silvers. I thought I could tint that with the Juchi violet to look like a purple metallic. Eh, false. <laughs> So I ultimately almost painted over this completely later because it did, did not want the blue. 
I did not put that on there to give him a cool mohawk look. I put that on there to make it purple metallic and really be shiny and reflective there. Does not work. Will disappear later. And next up, we're going to deal with the horns and the claws. And as you can see, when you have these like big ivory looking horns and claws, you know, we are tempted to make them look dirty and weathered. And I would have 90% of the time done that or even just use a different color layer paint to just make them off white instead of, I mean, that's why we don't use white. Well, I did consider using white, didn't I? Yeah, Wraithbone is already kind of an off white, but this will do his teeth and his claws and his horns. And see I've already got that Xerxes under his chin and you can see my camera <laughs> my photography is still not the best see oh what a beautiful invisible dragon there folks um, I don't have a monitor to view this while I'm painting I don't have the technology and I don't have the equipment for it so I have to I've drawn little hashtags on my mat so I can center it and then as long as I know if my mini is centered in those hashtags they're not hashtags just little hatch marks I know that as long as my photo, like what I'm painting is in there, I'll be able to see it on camera later. And I trust the zoom is working, which it usually does. So that's how I do the paint to life stuff. But obviously if I take the model and put it in my lap, it's not on camera. And then I realize it and put it back in frame as I have here. So Wraithbone is gonna go up in his mouth for teeth, the elbow horns, the horn horns. And yeah. Just trying to think if there was anything else. Uh, those two little stony patches under his feet, they got painted craft gray, as you see. And ultimately, I'll paint them to match the base when I attach it later. For now, they're just what they are. Okay. Let's come to a transition here. Yeah. So now we have two colors wings. The underside of the wing is different than the top side. Oh yeah, here's me with the Drusetti Violet trying to tint that blue, and as you can see, it's doing no such thing. That was the mistake, which got fixed later. All right, now this is Necron Compound, a gentle dry brush underneath the wing. We had that Damonette purple underneath there. I just wanted to give it a reflective quality because I've already done the back side of the wings in this place. I haven't finished touching up the teeth yet either. But this uh, Necron Silver is the win on the wing. It just gives it slightly a metallic property without looking silver. That's what I was kind of aiming for because this was the backside of the wing and how I ultimately solved it. I went out and I got an iridescent sealer from Mod Podge. It's shiny. It's got a rainbow hue. I taped off his midsection and I gave her a spray all over her body so she would have this reflective rainbow like color. Now, this is just me pinning it. I'm drilling holes, taking some uh, paperclip material, feeding it through the holes, gluing them on place, and then eventually just stabbing it into my base and gluing it into those holes. We pin it because she weighs a good quarter pound, and if not pinned, the glue would light bulb to break off. So you can see her spine is done now. Her teeth and tongue are finished. Those little details, a little bit of uh, gem red for the eye, and let's see how she looks in the finished pictures. Here she is mounted to that base. You can see the gems, all the little um, tufts and everything that I've put down there. You can see some of the reflective Mod Podge. It looks really cool in person. I wouldn't do it for everything, but for a celestial kind of uh, dragon from space, it works really well. The opposite sides, again, with such a big wingspan, it's very hard to photograph uh, to take a photo of her and get it all in the shot. But the base looks pretty cool. And here she is top down. You can get a sense of that rainbow kind of galaxy hue from that Mod Podge and see how she's standing in front of that little grassy terrain. That's where Emily can put her miniature to be conversing with this dragon. And up close and personal for the win, Nebulous. There's more of that Mod Podge glitter effect that I was going for. So that was a long one. If you're still here, thank you very much for supporting my channel and watching my videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or email me at paint at gmail.com. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. See you next time.